some interesting structural devices in this chapter. Um, this is the, the only time that we actually see a, a full-blown flashback. Um, which is uh, in my copy is on page 122, but it's Ralph thinking back. Once, following his father from Chatham to Devonport, they lived in a cottage on the ed of, edge of the moors. In the succession of hours that Ralph had known, this one stood out with particular clarity because, and it goes on and on and on, this big um, flashback that is a whole page long in length. And it's funny because this flashback is... There are, there are thoughts of home, but this is the first big flashback, and that's a structural device when writers decide to change the chronological order in which things are happening. In other words, we jump back in time. You've got to ask yourself, why is that? And I think it's because we are starting to think of the boys on the island as actually being quite wild and savage. And Golding is very clever here, thinks, I'm just going to remind you what these boys were like. You know, it's talking about having... Uh, a bowl of cornflakes and things like that. I'm just going to remind you that these are actually civilised, well-behaved little boys, so that what comes next will be all the more shocking. So the juxtaposition of a very uh, sort of um, normal um, flashback with what's going to happen next increases the horror of just how bad things are going to get on the island. This is probably a good time to talk about some of the other... Um, religious imagery that's going on in this chapter. Remember I talked a few videos ago about how Simon can be interpreted as this sort of Christ-like figure and he exhibits one of uh, Christ's um, characteristics in this chapter where he is able to prophesy, in other words to see the future. He says to Ralph, you'll get back all right and the key word is you you'll you know he he's sort of not saying we will get back all right you will so maybe somehow simon supernaturally knows look i'm not going to make it it's all very uh, spooky in terms of structure then i said in the last video i'd go into structure uh, the greek philosopher aristotle writing a few hundred years before uh, the birth of jesus talked a lot about structure in his book the poetics and that work was really built on in the 1800s by Gustav Freytag, who came up with uh, this pyramid, um, which applies to, uh, well, he looked at all uh, tragedy and drama. And basically, he said that everything starts with an exposition, which is obviously at the beginning, and that's where we get to know the theme and the setting and the characters. And then there's rising action, where there's an increase in tension or uncertainty, building right up to a climax, which is the big event the big moment in a text and it is the greatest tension the greatest audience involvement and crucially it's a time when the main character in a text has a choice to make that will help you understand what the climax is when you're looking for uh, you know how to analyze the structure of a text and then as you can see so it builds up and up and up and then there's this big moment and then it winds down towards the end and there's the falling action at that time uh, the earlier tragic forces which we see can cause the continuing failing fortunes of the hero all the way down to what uh, we might call the denouement in French, which is the ending. And it doesn't have to be a happy ending, a good or a bad ending. What if we were to put Lord of the Flies up against that structural analysis then? What does that tell us and where are we now at this point in the book. Well, we can look at it like this, can't we? The exposition is essentially the, the beginning of the book where we discover this is a group of boys who are on their way from England to the safety of Australia. They're trying to get away from a nuclear threat to life in Europe. And we learn a little bit about Ralph and Piggy, but we don't learn much else about the rest of the boys. In the rising action is where the boys gather together on the beach. They elect a leader. Uh, Ralph defeats Jack, who's furious when he loses. Uh, the boys are exploring the island. Tension grows between Jack and Ralph. Um, you know, this, this thing about well, should we be hunting or should we be building uh, a fire? Uh, and the rumours of the beast uh, begin. And it all builds up to the climax, which is something we haven't yet hit in our analysis. It's, you know, we're seven chapters in. It hasn't happened quite yet. 
but it's where Simon encounters the Lord of the Flies in the forest and realises the beast is not a physical entity, but something that exists within each boy on the island. Remember, one of Golding's major themes is that mankind is inherently evil and bad, and society and rules and regulations are what keep us in check. If that's one of his major themes, it's going to be evident in the climax, so it is evident here. And, of course, horribly, when Simon tries to approach the other boys and tell them what's going on, they savagely kill him, which is something that we see foreshadowed in this chapter with Robert, isn't it? Foreshadowing is where something happens that hints at something that's going to happen later, and we saw that in this chapter, you know, almost like a, a precursor to what's going to happen uh, to Simon. The falling action then is um, all of the boys pretty much have abandoned Ralph and Piggy, um, and there's this further descent into savagery and chaos. And when the other boys kill Piggy and destroy the conch, Ralph runs away and encounters the naval officer. And in fact, I think we leave the naval officer bit is probably the denouement. Um, so all of that up to the uh, naval officer would be the falling action. But right at the end, the naval officer appears and assures the boys they're going to be rescued and their savagery will be ended. So that's the structural analysis of the text. Now, why is that important? Well, if you're analysing an extract in the exam or for an essay or whatever it is, it's, it's good to know where it happens, where it occurs in the book. So, for example, what we've just read is about here, isn't it? So we know that at this key point building up to the climax, it's a good point to foreshadow what's going to happen in that climax uh, with you know the, the poor treatment of Robert. And it's all to do with our understanding of structure. So it's pretty clever, um, but that's the structural analysis. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel.